Welcome back to the channel everyone. My name is Pete. We got another tutorial for you guys. Like millions of other Americans a couple weeks ago, I tuned into The Last Dance, which The Last Dance is a 10-part documentary done by ESPN and Netflix on Michael Jordan's Bulls dynasty. And aside from it being amazing storytelling, there was one instance and one effect that I wanted to recreate in Adobe After Effects and Photoshop and that is the animated timeline effect. Super simple looking effect, but it is a little complex to kind of arrange, and that's what I'm gonna walk you guys through today. First, you're gonna open up Photoshop, all right, and then you wanna create a new document, and then make sure you're width is 10,000 pixels and your height is 1080 um, and then change your background content to black and basically that's so you can see what you're drawing you're gonna have to delete this later make sure you always save your project Dance timeline okay so to make your timeline in Photoshop you're gonna want to go to your rectangle tool and start somewhere over here and then draw it real thin so there you go zoom in and when you zoom in like this this is kind of what your timeline will look like just because the height of the document is 1080 so like imagine that being this rectangle here being a video screen so that's roughly going to give you a little estimate of what it's going to look like make sure it is centered so if you want it a little thicker or thinner this is really all, all to your liking i'm going to make it a little make it a little thicker than that about right there okay now we're centered we're got we got our line um, we're centered both ways and now we got to make our tick marks so i'm going to do 10 big tick marks and then in between i'm going to make little six month increments so the big ones are obviously the full years like 1983 1984 1985 and then the six month increments are obviously like june 1983 june 1984. we're going to once again go back to the rectangle tool and kind of roughly draw what we want here that's actually pretty good make sure you are centered with the main timeline okay so now you're going to take this Go over to your layer, duplicate, and there you go. Now you have two. Okay, and then you wanna copy both of them that you made. Copy and paste by hitting Command C and then Command V. And then you wanna take all four of them, copy, paste. Now, I will say there's probably easier ways to go about this, but this is the way that I developed. You can certainly do it in other ways. Okay, now that we have all of our main tick marks made we're gonna take them all and hit this to evenly distribute them and then this to center them with the line so now we have our main tick marks and what we're gonna do is label these accordingly you don't have to do this but I'm going to I'm gonna do 1983 1984 now that we have all of our main tick marks labeled we're gonna copy and paste them again the whole of all of them paste and then make sure they're about halfway in between here while you're all selected this is the key part half them and then drag them up so they are centered with the line so now you have your timeline it's almost done now you want to add your text so go to text you can use any font really um, I'm gonna use Helvetica LT standard, do 1983. Copy paste. Make sure you're right in the center of the line, keeping it consistent, of course, and you're gonna do this all the way down till you fill out your timeline. Okay, so as you can see, now you have your timeline pretty much made. And uh, like I said, um, this can all be, you can do as many tick marks as you want. You can do them as close as you want. You can do quarter increments in the years too. Um, you can use different texts. It's really all up to you. But now that we have this done, make sure you save it and then go down to background and then make it invisible. Start After Effects, new project, save as. Just to start it off, go back into your folder, Last Dance Tutorial, Last Dance Dance Timeline, AEP. Start a new composition, um, 1920 by 1080. Just do Last Dance Tutorial, 10 second long, background color black. 
All right, so now that you have your composition started, you're gonna wanna go into your folder, take your PSD file and drag it in. Make sure you import it as a composition right here on this dropdown. So that way you can retain all the layers in here. You can edit them all individually. Um, you can go back into Photoshop due to, uh, thanks to Adobe's dynamic link, you can go back in and save it and then alter how this file looks, which is really awesome. Um, and you can see there, there's your timeline as a composition, but this is your main. So you're gonna drag the, drag the whole composition in and you can see that if we adjust the positioning, we now have a moving timeline. Um, so go to where your year starts or where you wanna go. Let's say we go from 1991 here. That's where we're gonna start to about Michael Jordan's rookie season. Let's go all the way to 1984, I believe. So we roughly get that in the center. So we got two and a half seconds. And as you can see, if we do this, there we go. And that might take a little too long. So I'm gonna move this keyframe to two seconds. So it's a little faster. There you go. So now you have the workings of a timeline. Do easy ease for both of these, just to add a little bit of natural to it. And that looks so good right there. So now what we're gonna have to do is feather the edges here. Cause obviously in the example I showed you, the timeline doesn't take up the whole frame. It just is kind of feathered in the middle here. So what you're gonna wanna do, go into new shape layer, make sure your shape layer is above your timeline in the composition. Make the box however wide you want it to be. Go to align, center it. All right, go in here over to your last dance timeline layer. Go into track mat, alpha mat. So there you go, now you see it's showing up. And now to feather it, you go into, do crop edges, drag that down to the shape layer. Bump this to 25 and then start feathering. And I probably put this at about 150. So now you have your working timeline. Um, what I'm gonna do is move this down. And now we gotta add the background text that appears moving with the photographs in the background as well. Okay, so I got my two images for my corresponding years here. And I am going to drop the 1991 when they lost to the Pistons in here. Scale that up so it fits the screen. I'm gonna create a null object. And this is important. So you wanna make this, take this parent link here and drag it up to the null one. So that way, basically what we're doing is anchoring that image to the null object and we can move it and we can anchor other images to it too, which is that's what I'm gonna do here. We're gonna create a keyframe on the null and as it moves, end it right as this goes off frame. Drag in the 1984 pick, parent it to the null. You don't have to scale it up. I'm going to, um, as you did with the key, for, as you did with the timeline, do easy ease, just so it looks more natural. Okay, and now you are going to want to make corresponding text. So to um, your timeline, as you can see in the example here, you can see that there's text in the background, just an additional layer to make this even more better and understandable for the audience. So this I'm gonna put as, let's say, May 1991. I'm gonna keep my fonts the same. There we go. Okay, so now you wanna align it, after you align your text, go up here, kind of adjust it a little bit to your liking. I'm gonna go right there. And now this is the important part, you wanna parent it to the null again, so that way it sticks to that image. All right, and then when you're here, duplicate that, and then change this to, let's say October, 1984, oops, there you go, center it up. You might have to do some adjusting here, some tweaking, oh yeah, 
and see that's what happens if you forget to parent it make sure you parent all the layers of uh, your text and your picture in the background everything that's in the background to the null so there you go and that's what it's gonna look like and there you go so now you have your working timeline like I said there's gonna be some ironing out you're gonna need to do and you can add some things to make it look a little better so here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna add a drop shadow to here I'm gonna add a drop shadow to the to the text um, drop this up to like 75 76 area increase the softness copy it paste it here to my other text layer and then also paste it to my last dance timeline just so it's easier to see for the audience you don't have to do this but I'm going to just to make it look more natural to the eye add motion blur by clicking this little tab here under these three dots and see now I think that's too much of a motion blur um, especially on the timeline you can't really see so what I'm gonna do for that is take it off the timeline and then go into directional blur. This way you can control the blur a little more. Go into your keyframes. At about one second you want it peaking because that's when it's gonna be the fastest motion. So go to make your blur length, uh, I would say about eight and make sure it is about 90 degrees just because that's it's going sideways as it moves so make sure your blur length starts at zero and then goes to back to zero at the end there now that we are all finished here's the finished product and you can add sound effects you can change a lot of things like i said you can change the font text the position of the timeline I just wanted to give you guys a tutorial on basically how to accomplish this effect. I figured it's a very useful effect that is you can use in pretty much across the board. It's very basic, but complex at the same time. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I hope I was able to provide some value for you all, for the audience here, and like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.